everybody, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and today we're going to take a look at section 5.5. This is on the substitution rule. So hopefully we've seen substitution somewhere before, and it's pretty much the same. We're, we're going to let u equal some value, and then we're going to uh, take the derivative, and then we're going to replace u with that value at the end. At least for um, indefinite integrals, that's where we don't have the limits. We're also going to do some examples with definite integrals, and in those we have the choice to either switch back to the x world or to change our limits of in integration to the u world, hmm, excuse me, and then uh, stay in the u world. So what we'll once again we're going to take a look at some examples, and there's a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, let's go ahead and get started, but. I put a procedure up here, a general procedure for doing a change of variable with these functions. Usually we want to take some inner function to be u, and then we want to make sure that the derivative of whatever we pick is, is also in there, or a multiple of it is in there. Um, and then we're going to make the substitution. Uh, we're going to clean it up a little bit, take the antiderivative, um, and uh, go from there. So. Let's, let's take a look at an example, because uh, just reading that, I don't think I would have any idea what to do. All right, uh, so let's say we're trying to uh, do this integral right here. Uh, pretty crazy, a lot of stuff going on. Um, it looks like it's a product of these two things. I could um, multiply this thing out here. That would, that would take a long time, because it's to the sixth power and then distribute that x cubed in there, and then I could do each term individually. That would just take me a really long time. So um, let's see what use how u substitution is going to help us in this case. So what I want to do is I want to let u equal some function that when I take the derivative, derivative of it, um, the derivative is inside there uh, in that integral as well, or a multiple of it. So if I were to let u equal x cubed, then when I take the derivative of x cubed, I get 3x squared. So I'd want to make sure that there's an x squared in here as well, but there's not. So that would be a poor choice for u. Now if I take the x to the fourth plus 16 for to be my u, the derivative of that is 4x cubed. And x cubed is in here. We just have to multiply it by 4. Uh, it, that means it's a multiple of it. Um, and so that would be the choice that I would want to do. So let's see how we go about doing this. So I'm going to say let u equal x to the fourth plus 16. Okay. Now the derivative, derivative of u is just going to be equal to uh, 4x cubed uh, dx. Right. Um, I guess we just took the derivative of it. And then if I look back in here, I don't want just an, a 4x cubed. I just want an x cubed. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So I'm really just going to get a 1 fourth du. That's just dividing that by 4 is equal to x cubed dx. So now here's the u. I can raise that u to the sixth power, so that's good. The du is in here as well. Um, that's x cubed and the dx, x cubed and the dx. So I've got everything that I need in order to do my substitution. So let's go ahead and do the substitution now. So x cubed dx, that takes care of those two terms there. It becomes 1 fourth du. And x to the fourth plus 16 becomes u, and we're going to raise that to the sixth power. And so this is when I do my substitution, I get out of all of my x's, and now I'm completely in u's and du's. So out of x's and dx's and into u's and du's. Now I can pull the one fourth out because it's a constant, and I'll do u to the sixth and put du at the end to make it look better. And now that's a much, much easier 
uh, integral to, uh, to take the antiderivative of it. So just using the power rule, that becomes 1 fourth times u, we just add 1 and then divide by that number, plus c. And cleaning that up a little bit, we're going to get u to the 7th all over 28, and plus c. And then finally, we have to substitute back in for u that x to the 4th plus 16. So this is going to be x to the 4th plus 16 raised to the 7th power all over 28 plus c. And this is our final answer right there. So uh, kind of to recap, we pick a good candidate for you, something that when uh, we take the derivative of it, a multiple of that is in there. And then we are going to, um, we're going to try to uh, get each one of these to, each one of these to be exactly in our integral. So we had to divide both sides by fourth over here to get rid of that four. And then we make our substitutions, clean it up, take the antiderivative, and then substitute back. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another example. All right, um, here we have the integral of x to the ninth times the sine of x to the tenth dx. So why don't you go ahead and see if you can um, pick a good candidate for you and then figure out your du, get this thing cleaned up, and see if you can uh, solve this. When you're ready, unpause the video, and we'll go through the solution. All right, so um, if I were to pick u, for example, to be sine of x, that means the derivative of that would have to be in there, cosine of x. So I don't want to pick that. If I pick x to the ninth to be my u, then some com or some multiple of x to the eighth would need to be in here, which it's not. So really my only candidate here is x to the tenth because um, there is a multiple of x to the ninth in here. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So let u equal x to the 10th, and therefore the derivative of u is equal to 10x to the 9th. Now remember, we don't want 10x to the 9th in there because we don't have a, a 10 coefficient. So I'm going to divide both sides by 10 here. So that's going to be 1 10th du is equal to x to the ninth. All right, now that's going to let me uh, do my substitutions. So substituting over to the u world, x to the ninth is equal to one tenth du. And then we have sine of and x to the tenth here is going to be equal to u. So this is just times the sine of u and now clean this up here we're going to pull the one tenth out and then we're going to have the sine of u times du and now we can easily take the antiderivative the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine um, so just remember that the derivative of sine is cosine but the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine so this becomes 1 tenth, um, and pull the negative out front, and we're going to have the cosine of u plus c. And finally, we do the substitution back, so this is going to be negative 1 tenth times the cosine of x raised to the tenth. We're going to substitute that back in there, plus c. Remember, c is just some constant of integration that may be in here. Why? Because if we were to um, take the derivative of this function here, regardless of what c is, we would get this function back here. All right, let's take a look at an example of a couple of definite integrals and see the two different ways we can really solve those. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this one right here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a doozy here. But uh, this is the definite integral. So that means we have the limits from 1 to 3 
of 2 to the x over 2 to the x plus 4. All right, so let's uh, let's remember a couple of things. One is that, I'll do this off to the side, the derivative of b to the x, where b is a positive number, so 2 is a positive number, so it works for this, is equal to um, b to the x, natural log of b. All right, so if we let u equal just 2 to the x, that means that 2 to the x natural log of 2 would need to be a multiple, or there need to be a multiple of that in there. This plus 4 over here really kind of messes that up because we would have to take that into account somehow, which we really can't if we just let u equal 2 to the x. So if we let u equal 2 to the x plus 4, remember when we take the derivative, the constant will fall off and we'll just get a multiple of this, and that's our choice here. So, we're going to let u equal 2 to the x plus 4, 2 to the x plus 4, and that means our derivative of u is just going to be equal to, using this up here, 2 to the x times the natural log of 2. Now, there's no natural log of 2 in there, and natural log of 2 is just a constant, it's just a value. So, I'm going to divide both sides by that. Um, so I'm going to get 1 over natural log of 2 du, oh, and I forgot to put the dx over here, excuse me, is equal to 2 to the x dx. So 2 to the x dx, there's the 2 to the x dx, and then this is u down here, so we're able to do our substitution. Now, remember... I'm going to keep using these limits here, 1 and 3, once we move over to the u world, but that's not really appropriate because this is for the x world. But I'm just going to keep it there so I, I know um, what to do after I substitute back. So remember, um, really these are for the x world. And in the next example, we'll talk about moving these to the u world. But for now, I want to keep my limits in the x world. All right, so this is, so uh, on the bottom here, we're going to have uh, the u, right, u down here. Um, what is 2 to the x dx? That's equal to 1 over natural log of 2 and uh, du, du. And then kind of cleaning this up a little bit. Uh, we can bring the 1 natural log of 2 out to the front because it's just a constant. And inside here, we're just going to have 1 over u du. All right. Um, now we're going to go ahead and find the antiderivative. Uh, this is going from 1 to 3. So uh, the antiderivative of 1 over u. Um, now that's a little bit tricky because we'd love to use the power rule. We'd love to bring the u up to the top and do a u to the minus 1, but if you do u to the uh, minus 1 plus 1, you get 0, and then you try to divide by 0, and that doesn't work. So we have a different rule when we have u to the minus 1 or 1 over u, which is the same thing. And that's the using the natural log of u. Why? Because, remember, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x. So that's what we're going to do here. And remember, if you look here, um, u is always going to be positive, because regardless of what you put in here for x, you're going to get a positive, so I don't need to mess with the absolute value bars in this one. So this is going to give me a 1 over natural log of 2, and then times, and remember, uh, that's going to be natural log of u, all evaluated from 1 to 3. And now I'm going to substitute back to the x world here. So this is going to be... I'm going to put that on top, so this is going to be the natural log of, remember our u is 2 to the x plus 4, so natural log of 2 to the x plus 4, all over natural log of 2. Now these limits of integration um, should apply because we're back in the x world. And now I can evaluate that using our fundamental theorem of calculus part two. So lots of work, I said. So this is going to be the natural log. Remember, it's the function evaluated at the upper limit minus the function evaluated at the lower limit 
So this is 2 to the third plus 4, um, all over natural log of 2 minus, and then evaluated the lower function here, 2 to the 1 plus 4, all over natural log of 2. And, oh, keep going here. And we're going to have, so this is going to be the natural log. This is 8 plus 4, which is 12. 12 minus the natural log of, this is 2 plus 4, which is 6. All over natural log of 2. And if you remember the log rules, when we subtract them, we can change that to a division. So this is the natural log of the first over the second. So this is 12 over 6 over the natural log of 2. And 12 over 6 is just 2. So this becomes a natural log of 2 over the natural log of 2, which gives us 1. Woo! And that is our answer for that one. All right, let's take a look at one more where we will this time change our limits of integration to the U world. All right, here's the last one. It's uh, the integral from 0 to 2 of the function 2x over x squared plus 1 quantity squared dx. All right, so go ahead and give it a try. And when you're ready, um, unpause it and we'll go through a solution. Okay, so remember, we're looking for a good candidate for you, and this x squared plus 1 is the best because when we take the derivative of x squared plus 1, we're just going to get 2x, and the 2x is already there, so we, what do we, we don't even have to do any multiples. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to let u equal x squared plus 1, and that means our du is going to be equal to... 2x dx. And a lot of times we would divide by something by now, but the 2x is here, dx is here, so we're good. Now the other thing I want to do this time that I didn't do last time is go ahead and change our limits of integration to the u world. And by doing this, that means we don't ever have to switch back to the x world. So doing that is just using this substitution that we made here. So we're going to put these x world values in here to come up with the uh, equivalent u world values. All right, so for the lower limit, which is normally 0, I just plug it in here for 0, and I'm going to get u is equal to 1. So the lower limit becomes 1, and the upper limit, I just plug the 2 in there for x, and I'm going to get that u is equal to 2 squared plus 1 is 5, so that's going to be equal to 5. So by making this simple substitution in the beginning, I don't ever have to go back to the x's, which is nice. So this is going to give me the integral from 1 to 5 of, all right, so the 2x dx is just equal to du. And the x squared plus 1 is equal to u, so that's over u squared. So cleaning this up just a little bit, and we're going to get uh, integral from 1 to 5 of uh, 1, well, let's actually write that as u to the negative 2, I'll bring that up to the top, times du. And now I can just apply the power rule for integration here. So this is going to be equal to u, if you add 1 to negative 2, you get negative 1. So this is u to the negative 1, all over negative 1, evaluated from 1 to 5. And now using the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, we're going to evaluate it at 5 and then do minus evaluate it at 1. Let me get a little bit simpler for that. This is just going to be a negative 1 over u evaluated at 1 to 5. So this becomes uh, negative 1 over 5 minus a negative 1 over 1. And so that's going to be negative 1 fifth plus 1. So that's going to give us a positive 4 fifths. And that is our answer on 0 0.8. All right, guys, I hope this helped today. Um, use substitution is very common. You'll definitely see some test questions on it. If you have any other questions, let me know. And have a great rest of your week. Thanks.